Well, let's begin. Um, the first thing that I want to do is teach you about the model of reading instruction that is really critical for you to know. And that model is the one that you see on the screen. And let me just uh, point out a couple of things to you uh, before we begin. What I'm going to discuss with you first will be the foundations of reading so that you have a really clear understanding of what it is, how um, it's assembled, and how you're supposed to, to view it so that we can then talk about decoding and fluency. After we talk about decoding and fluency, I'm going to discuss vocabulary development, and after vocabulary development, I will present comprehension development. Now, what makes this model so nice is that really all of the information fits on one page, and it is a view of reading instruction that is extremely logical. Is it correct? Well, that's really neither here nor there. What I want to do is just a really brief overview of some benchmarks for grade levels that I'd like to assign to each of these levels before we really begin and start learning about it. And starting with the foundations of reading, let's put this at kindergarten. Decoding and fluency, let's have the span be first through third grade. Vocabulary development, we'll put the span at fourth through eighth grade. And comprehension development, let's put that at uh, fourth to eighth grade, but I'm going to write it out as 8-4 because one of the features of this model that I'm going to take a few hours to teach you is that everything in it moves clockwise, just like this. So if you just imagine a minute hand starting uh, like at 9 uh, p.m. or 9 a.m. or whatever and sweeping up toward 12 o'clock coming down through uh, 3 o'clock, down here to 6 o'clock, and then back up again. That's really the best way for you to view and use this model because ultimately what we're trying to establish is how do we get a child to have a value of comprehension by 8th grade. And there is a definite view of how that occurs and there are activities that are associated with it and it is the model that you and I are going to be out to be working with. Well the first thing that I want to uh, cover with you then is just going to be kindergarten through third grade reading instruction and I think it's a it'll be a good lecture and a good presentation by the time I'm finished I think you'll have a really good understanding of what fluency really is and what I'd like you to do is just note at the top that the top of this model is kindergarten through third grade and we call this the learning to read process I'm going to abbreviate but you might want to uh, actually take the time to write it out but this is called the learning to read process and the first thing then that we're going to go over then will be the things related to learning to read including these foundations of reading and decoding and fluency so let's begin by looking at the foundations of reading and once again we're setting that at kindergarten and let me try to blow this up in your window just a little bit and uh, move it uh, down so that you can actually see uh, what I'm doing. And I'm going to continue with just sort of an overview of the foundations of reading before we actually dive into it and look at some activities and some other concepts that are uh, critical for you to understand. Now concepts about print and phonemic awareness, I guess it would help if I spelt awareness uh, correctly, but I will get around to that one day. Just make that correction for me if you would. Concepts about print, we're going to put that at 9 a.m. That's where we're going to put concepts about print at 9 a.m. Phonemic awareness, we're going to set that at 10 a.m. And we're doing that because I want you to see this both visually and conceptually, that we keep these areas separate, that concepts about print is set apart from phonemic awareness. You can't mix and match in this model. Instead, what you have to do is compartmentalize and understand that the way a lot of reading programs work and the way that the state standards are designed, they are designed really for part to whole instruction for the early grades, contrary to what anybody, anybody says. So let's look at the first part of the foundations of reading. Concepts about print. Concepts about print will follow from the easiest, broadest concept of something like book concepts to the more narrow concept of sentence concepts to even a more narrow concept like word concepts, ultimately ending. And I think you should put a star right here by upper and lowercase letter names with this as one of the exit criteria. Now book concepts, as you know, are simply things like making a book work like a tool. And it's, for example, identifying the cover of a book, identifying how to open the book, how to turn pages in the book, how to basically make the book work like a tool. If you have, for example, two children in a classroom and one child is making a house uh, out of his uh, pile of books and another child 
who has the book upside down but is pretend reading, one child is thought to be in a better position to begin to learn to read, and that is the child who is making the book work like a tool. So you will take the time then to try to teach and model all of the concepts about just making a book work like a tool so that children who do not come from a, a family uh, where they're being read to will be in a better position to learn uh, to read, to begin to get these foundations. Okay, well after the book concepts, now we move to sentence concepts, and this is a simple matter of directionality, and I'll just write in here direction. And so directionality simply means left to right, that in English we go from uh, left to right when we read. When we come to the end of a sentence, we don't simply read off the page, off the table, and out the window. We will return sweep and things like that. So you can see how things are becoming more and more narrow. We go from book concepts to sentence concepts to this level, word concepts. And these are word boundaries. So let me write in here boundaries, if I may. That says boundaries, believe it or not. And this is a, another concept that spaces, if they exist, before, after a collection of letters indicate that that collection of letters is probably a word. Now, we're dealing with concepts here, so the child might not be reading anything at this point. They might be looking at a word like expeditious, and you know, a few kindergartners would probably be able to decode that one and understand it. But the point is that they'll just look at a collection of letters and be able to tell you that it is probably, most likely, a word. Now, above word concepts are these upper and lowercase letter names. And that's really what we're aiming for, that a child can look at a capital A and a lowercase a, a capital B and a lowercase b, a capital C and a lowercase c, and be able to identify them when they see them, because the shape is going to indicate uh, the particular letter name that they're supposed to say. Well, some of the letters that tend to lag include P and B and D and Q. And the question, of course, is why might those letters lag? And the reason is that they are visually similar. If you just look at your pen right now, or whatever you happen to be writing with, and turn it in a variety of different directions, for example, looking at the point or the eraser, looking at it sideways or up and down, it's still a pen. Conceptually, it doesn't change. The problem with these letters is that they're too visually similar, so children might have a tough time early on with, with letter confusions because they overgeneralize. They overgeneralize the idea that no matter how you turn something, the thing is still the thing, when in fact with letters, that's not the case. So the types of activities that we'll review in a moment include multisensory activities. Let me write that in here, multisensory multisensory activities multisensory activities are ones that are very in, that that tend to involve as many senses as possible the sense of sight the sense of touch uh, they're very kinesthetic they're trying to use a variety of different ways to get a child to understand the letter name especially with these letter confusions which is why if you've ever seen in a kindergarten classroom children writing in sand or writing in air and so forth is because one particular sense the sense of sight isn't sufficient to be able for some children to discern these letters what you have to do instead is use a variety of senses and a variety of skills and a lot of kinesthetic perhaps even metacognitive approaches to get them to understand uh, the letter names well, I'll go over metacognition in a little bit, but before I do that, let's go to phonemic awareness now, if we could, and see if I can't bump that up just a little bit. Now, the next component is this thing called uh, phonemic awareness, and something you should know about phonemic awareness is that it is, in fact, separate from concepts about print. As I said, you can't mix and match, which is why we have one thing at 9 a.m., and we have another skill uh, that we're going to develop at 10 a.m. Well, this is going to go from the easiest to something more difficult called segmenting sounds. Identifying sounds might be simply identifying the first sound that you hear in cat, which would be a k sound. Blending sounds would be putting all of the sounds uh, that you hear in cat together to make a single spoken word like this, cat. And then segmenting sounds is where you will hear a spoken word like cat and tear it apart into k and a and t.
Now notice how I've written all of these letters. These are no longer letters, by the way. Anytime you see a letter between backslashes, you are indicating phonemes. Phonemes meaning sounds. Now the highest level in phonemic awareness is this thing called segmenting. So let's go ahead and put a little star by segmenting if we could. And understand that that is one of the exit criteria. Now, Segmenting takes many forms. It could be deleting sounds or counting sounds, substituting sounds or, or things like that, but really the type of segmenting that I would be most interested in having you know is one where you tear apart the whole word into its constituent phonemes like this k, a, and t, and maybe count them. Now I know you've probably already learned this, but I, I may not be convinced at this point that you know exactly why these things are important. Now, the reason that these things are so critical is because in order for a child to do the next thing, which is true decoding instruction, letter-sound correspondence, which I'm going to just arbitrarily set at first grade as sort of a benchmark, not as an absolute, but just a benchmark, in order for them to understand letter-sound correspondence, they have to have these foundations. So just continue to, to listen at this point and wait for me to give you the big reveal for why letter-sound correspondence truly depends upon these foundations. Now, what I want to do next is go a little bit more in depth in the concepts about print and phonemic awareness and discuss some activities. So we'll do that next when I come back.